the rest of God, people are searching everywhere. They're, they're, they're looking for answers. You know, you know, the rich man thought if he just had a little bit more money, that, that would be enough. How much is enough? Another million, whatever. There, there are people today that will check uh, the weather, and uh, if, if, if where they are it is raining or it is cold or is it exactly the weather they, they want, they have the resources and the ability, many of them, with, with private jets, that they can go anywhere in the world they want. They can look at the weather map of the world and they can go exactly where it would be perfect. And by the way, there's somewhere in the world today where it's really, really nice. And uh, if you've got the money to get there, you can do it. But you know, people of, uh, that, that have that ability, call it the jet set, call it whatever you want to call it, uh, they cannot find the rest that they are looking for. In fact, many of the people that are the rich and famous that you idolize in Hollywood, I would not have Hollywood idols. Uh, you, know where, uh, you know where I get my idols from? The Bible. I don't, I don't have uh, sports idols. I don't have uh, Hollywood idols. I don't have other idols in other things. I have uh, my, my uh, I, in fact, I have no idols. I shouldn't use the word idols. But my trust is in God and, and my, my, let's call them not idols, but heroes. My heroes are, are in the Bible. My heroes don't dunk a basketball. My heroes don't throw a football. My heroes don't do this or that. Uh, who, who are your heroes? Do you have Bible heroes? I mean, the one that ought to be the first and foremost in your life is who? God Almighty. <coughs> Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy strength. The first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And it says all the other commandments, all the law and the prophet, that's all the commandments of God, hinge on what? These first two. Now let's talk about rest. Let's go here to chapter 4, verse 1. And it says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us, of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. There's some of you are sitting here today, you've come short of it. You don't have rest. You're troubled. You couldn't you couldn't sleep last night. You're worried. you 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 have anxious care. God, did did you know that the Bible has three hundred and sixty-five times for every day of the every day of the year, God has a fear not. God's people are not supposed to fear. Is so we're supposed to trust and rest or have this peace, this peace that passeth all understanding. So I'm afraid that some of you are here and, and you're missing the rest of God. Be honest. You know, you, uh, you, can, you can come into church and tell the preacher everything's okay, but you know in your heart if everything's okay or not. You know uh, if, if you have the ability uh, to have the rest of God in your... And if, and if you don't have it, you can have it. <laughs> if you don't have it, you can have it. So let's look on. Uh, come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, but not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now the key is faith. Faith is so important. You can do everything with faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, that's the, that's the that's definition of faith, the Bible definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Now let me ask you this. Do you have saving faith? That's the question. You've got to have saving faith to go to heaven. If you do not have saving faith today, you'll not go to heaven, you'll go to hell. You see, you, you, and by the way, that's the only way you're going to rest. You see, God has put a desire in you as His creation to have fellowship with Him. You, you haven't been evolved. I don't care what they told you. A lot of you are younger uh, than I am. But for many, many, many years in America, we've taught the godless uh, theory of evolution in our public schools, and we've trained our children in uh, to, to believe those things. But let me say this. You and I are very special. 
Did you know that you and I were created in the image of God? We, we, didn't, uh, we didn't come from a polywog. We didn't come from a monkey. We are created in God's image. In God's image. Isn't that wonderful? Special. Very special. We're not, we're not like the rest uh, of this, this creation that was here. They, they asked me on a radio program the other day. I was on a live radio program on once a month. And mostly unbelievers and people don't care about God, atheists and all that. They, they have me on there because I'm the controversial figure that always stands up for God. And some of you might not like this either. I maybe shouldn't even bring it up because I'm getting some of you mad at me and you shut me off, won't listen to me the rest of the service. In fact, I won't even tell you what it was because I don't want you to get you mad at me. No, I won't, I won't tell you. It's something that, and, and it's something that, oh, you really, you really want to know now, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they asked me the question. Do you believe... Animals go to heaven. That's what they asked me. What? I'm not going to tell you what I told them. <laughs> find the answer in the Bible. If you can't find it in the Bible, come and talk to me after church. I'll tell you all about it. Amen. God bless you. They're very interesting. But you see, everything, everything I glean and everything I find, it has to be in the Bible. And, and I have to find it in the Word of God. And as I, as I, and, and you might be able to figure it out for yourself when I tell you what I'm going to tell you right now, that mankind, you and I, are in God's special uh, creation that are after His own heart and are in His image and that we have a living soul that lives forever and ever. Man, listen now, man is different from the animal world that is made for our pleasure. Okay? Let's turn our phones off, please. Chickens were made to eat. Amen? Amen. Pigs were made to eat. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, let me just say this. Dogs were made to pet. Cats were made to pet. Birds were made to get pretty and sing outside and all that. They were all made for our benefit. All of the creation was made for us, you and I as God's creation, to have dominion over these creatures. Lions are a lot stronger than we are, but we got them in cages. Amen. Rhinoceros is a lot stronger than we are. We've got them in cages and in zoos and things of that nature because we're in God's image and and we're just uh, so much more intelligent. We're an intelligent being that, that, that has a soul, a living soul. And, and we have the ability and the capacity to have fellowship with God. That's where rest is, fellowship with God. That's what you can... If you don't have rest today, you don't have fellowship with God. That's your problem. Nothing else, you wonder what's it all about. And by the way, God has a spark in you, and He has something in your heart that desires Him. You might not realize that, and you might be so wicked and uh, uh, evil and live in so much darkness that you can hardly recognize it. But there is a spark in you that once God, although you might have turned away from it, you might even turned away from it so hard, hard that you blasphemed the Holy Spirit and there might not be any hope for you anymore and you might be damned to a certain uh, uh, hell fire that you can never escape. You say, how do you know that that would be me? Well, it'd be you if you got no call of God on your heart today. If God doesn't call you anymore, doesn't have that wooing to you of calling you to salvation, and you blaspheme the blessed Holy Spirit of God, and as it talked about it in chapter 6 today in Hebrews, you read that, it talked about those that have partaken of the gift, I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit has talked to you, and you know it, and you know you should be saved, but you willingly turned against God and rejected the call of God, and 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 it says for you there's no more chance for repentance. That's what it says. That ain't about anybody losing salvation. There's some folks that believe you can lose your salvation. I don't believe that for a moment. 
Salvation is a free gift. You become a child of God. You're into the family of God. It's not of works that we have done, but by His grace He saved us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not that of yourself. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not about losing your salvation. And there are many that will take Hebrews chapter 6 and uh, they, they're of the persuasion like the church I was saved in a Methodist church. They believe in loss of salvation. I don't believe in that at all. That's why I left it. That's why I left the Methodist church. Assemblies of God church, Pentecostal church, they believe in loss of salvation. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries. I'm not part of the Assemblies of God church because I don't believe in loss of salvation. I don't believe other things they teach also. That's why I'm a Baptist. I'm an independent Baptist. You think, you think the Baptist got all the truth? No, but I'm a Baptist because I believe as far as I can find the Bible, that's why I follow it. That's why I'm a Baptist. You see, you, well, I was saved in a Methodist church. My mother and father were assemblies of God missionaries, and they were saved. I say you can get saved in a whole bunch of different uh, churches, but you ought to go for his body. I guarantee you one thing. You better understand when you become a child of God and you're in the family of God, you're saved forever. You're sealed. John says that you're in Jesus' hand. And then it says in John 10 also, you're in the Father's hand. Jesus got you. Then the heaven and the Father got you. And He got you double hold of God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And it says, and no one can pluck them out of your hand. The devil himself can't take you out of the Lord's hand. Saved and secure. The security of the believer. You need to have that. Because listen, you can't have real rest unless you're secure in salvation. You know that? If you're always thinking about, do I have my salvation? Oh, I sinned a little bit. Do I still have salvation? <coughs> Now, let me ask you a question. Are you saved because you don't sin? No. You're saved because Jesus shed His blood on Calvary's cross. And He was buried. He rose again the first, uh, the third day. And, and I've trusted that. And that's why I tell you about it. And I've been saved. And I can tell you how to be saved. And it's by grace through faith. And it's a free gift. And that's the only way you can have rest if you believe uh, the salvation is free and it's of God and it's not of man. Then you can rest. If, if, if you're trying to work to keep your salvation or get your salvation, you're never going to have rest. You understand what I'm saying? You're never going to have rest. You won't have it. You might feel good today and think, boy, boy, I've done good. I've done good today. I've done good. I think I'm saved. And then what happens? You backslide and sin a little bit and you say, uh-oh. I, that's like the guy come to me. Um, Mac. That was his name, Mac. I can't remember his name in a while. Uh, Walter Mac. Walter Mac. I think they're the ones that sent the preacher over to our house. April 4th, 1969, the preachers came to our house and, and, and Pastor Broilo and Pastor Ward and my wife and I knelt down on our couch and and got saved. We were we were going to church. We were good folks, like a lot of good folks go to church. We weren't born again, and they got saved. Well, just about a year, I stayed in the Methodist church, and the reason I left the Methodist church is because they believed you could lose your salvation. Walter Mack came to our house. I remember standing in the kitchen. My wife was there with me, and we talked to Walter Mack. I hadn't been saved that long. I didn't know the Bible like I do today. Forty-five off. Over, over 45 years, almost 45 and a half years ago now. And he says, why are you leaving our church? I said, I'm leaving your church. I'm glad I got saved at your church. I'm going to join this Baptist church. Why are you going to join the Baptist church? Because the Methodist church believe you can lose your salvation. He says, oh, you can. I says, oh, I don't know. I can't lose mine. I says, as far as I see, I got a free gift. I asked the Lord to save me, and he saved me, and I'm a child of God. I said, I didn't know much. He probably knew more about the Bible than saved a long time. Uh, I says, well, how do you lose your salvation? I ain't found that. And I don't understand how you can teach that. And he says, well, he says, the way you lose your salvation is sin. I said, oh, okay. And uh, I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck, really. I didn't know that much, but I said sin. And uh, I said, uh, do you ever sin? He said, oh yeah. And I says, have you lost your salvation? He said, oh no. Oh no, I haven't lost mine. 
And then I asked him this. This is how ridiculous this whole theory is. Listen. Then I asked him, how much do you have to sin to lose your salvation? That's what I asked him. How much do you, have? you, you There's probably some people sitting here that you've been taught improperly and you've gone to churches that teach you can lose your salvation. Ask your preacher wherever you go, how much do you have to sin to lose your salvation? Huh? Well, see, it's a, it's a ridiculous thing because if it's a free gift and if He cleanses us from all our sin, past, present, and future, then quit going around and thinking you're a Pharisee and you died in that same church, in that Methodist church. We were at the parsonage that was next to the church. There was a special thing. And there was an old preacher, about as old as Pastor Lamb. Pastor Lamb will be here with us tonight. Pastor Lamb's 89 years old, my dear brother in Christ, great preacher, and a wonderful man of God. Amen. There's a man about as old as him. Must, I don't know how old he was for sure, but he was in his 80s, whatever. Low 80s, middle 80s, high 80s. But the preacher at that church at that time, he said, Brother Barger, you see that, you see that man <coughs> over there? That old man? He says, yeah. He's a preacher. Oh, I didn't know who he was. And he says this. He says, you know that he hadn't sinned in 35 years? I said, oh. I didn't say nothing to him. There's an elderly woman standing next to him. I think it was his wife, if I'm not mistaken. Probably was his wife. I don't know. They didn't introduce me to him. But here's what I thought in my here's what I thought in my head. Like I mentioned in Sunday school this morning. I bet you give me a couple minutes to talk to his wife. I bet you I get something out of him. <laughs> I bet you I talk to his wife. I bet you I get something out of him. Huh? Yeah. Get something on you too, huh? Amen. Get something on me, right? Don't talk to my wife. She's in the back. You know, talk to <laughs> She's been sworn to secrecy. She <laughs> Though the whole theme were forgiven and there's no sins to our account, listen now, but we have rest if our sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So my sins are, are buried in the deepest sea. Far away as the east is from the west. God says your sins and your iniquities and I remember no more. Then we can have rest if we trust in His shed blood. Not that we're perfect, because remember 1 John 1 1.8 yep. says if we say that we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. But 1 John 1 1.9 says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's go on. We go on. Uh, it says, For unto us the gospel is preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Now look at that. For we which have believed do enter into rest. On April 4th, 19, I can't explain it. Them two preachers walked down that. We were in, they had a split level home and, and there was a uh, uh, come up a flight of stairs from the front and then go down a flight, come up a step. I was standing in the living room at the top of the stairs and my wife and the preachers went out. And there was something... I was right with God. I had a peace, a joy, a rest. No matter, no matter what you what you call it, I had it. And I've had it every single day since. I can't speak for others. I know some people that have been saved, and not that I'm anything big or special or anything like that, but I never have fallen in, got out of fellowship with God in a big way where I've been way backslidden like some people are, may be here today in this church. Might be out there on the, on the, on the, on the internet uh, watching this thing on the YouTube today. I'm going to put it up on the air this afternoon. You might, I, I hear, I know some people that don't think they're saved anymore because they live such a wicked life. They got so backslidden. That, that's terrible. I've never been in that shape. There's, uh, since April 4th, 1969, there's not one day, one minute, one second that I've ever doubted for a moment that I'm not saved. I know. 
I'm resting in the in the in the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, Well, you think you're so high. I think I'm so high. I'm I'm far from that. You have a long conversation with my wife, she'd tell you all about it. I ain't perfect. I'm saved, amen. <laughs> I'm saved. I'm resting in the finished work. I said finished work of Christ. What do you mean finished? It is finished. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any, you don't have to add nothing to it. Forget your good works, Mr. Do Gooder, Mrs. Do Gooder. Trying to tell everybody how great a Christian you are. Oh, be quiet. Tell everybody how great Jesus is. Amen. If you got any greatness, or if I have any greatness, it's it's of God and it's through God and God working us those things that are worthwhile. We are nothing and He is everything. And what He'll do to you and I as a child of God is He'll uh, teach us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. That's what God's looking for. God don't work with God don't work with big shots. He works with servants like Moses. We read about that. The, the service, His servant Moses died, and now who Joshua, His servant. Uh, took over to take the people into the promised land. If ye shall, verse number, verse number uh, six. Seeing therefore, it is remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Uh, where was this rest first preached to? The children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Remember that they were in the wilderness. <coughs> My, they had mighty deliverance. You remember that story? Some of you remember it. Some of you don't. Some of you might have. Some of you might not even have read the Bible, but you might have seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, at the movie at the movie house many years ago. Remember, they made that that movie, and, and it showed how the plagues came on 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 Egypt, and then God delivered the children of Israel, and we saw Moses uh, lead them across, and they did such a nice job of showing that water party, and and, and they showed all them all them. Uh, of God's people going across. I say God's people saying Jews, but the problem was the vast majority of them were not God's people. Amen. And their carcasses died and rotted in the wilderness. He delivered them. He fed them with manna. He did so many things for them. My Lord, Moses just went up into, into the mountain just to get the commandments of God. And, 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 and while he was gone, he thought he had a faithful man, Aaron, that was supposed to be the high priest and his sidekick. And what did, what did Aaron do? Man alive, Moses wasn't hardly out of their sight. And, and, and he took all their gold earrings and, and bracelets and, and all of that kind of things. And, and, uh, and he, formed a, uh, he formed a calf. He, it said he, he, he made that <coughs> terrible <coughs> golden calf. And they worshipped that. And he got him a rock band. I don't like rock bands. I don't like the Rolling Stones. I don't like the Beatles. I don't like soft rock. I don't like hard rock. And I don't like rock in the church. You might not agree with that. All kinds of churches now got rock and roll music to draw a crowd. I ask people. Well, I don't come to your church. I go to Calvary because they got rock music. Go ahead, rock on. <laughs> you ain't, ain't going to get it here. You ain't going to be here, buddy. <laughs> We're going to have God's music here. We're going to have symphony here. You love that old rock music because you still got so much of the world in you. That's your problem. You can get a crowd with rock music. And I'm not saying they never get anybody to say that. And I'm sure they do. And, and, and one thing I like about that church is they they pick up homeless people, bring them in. Very few churches do that. I'm glad they do that. And that's a good thing. But I ain't for the rock music. And that's what they had with Moses up on the hill. They they danced and and took their clothes off. You know you know rock music and nakedness go hand in hand. <laughs> they do. That's what they play them go go halls and all that junk. You know. Sure. Am I, am I telling the truth or not? Well, sure I am. But anyway, uh, they fought God. And then they, they rejected God. The rest was there, but they rejected it. They wanted the world. 
and they wanted quails and they wouldn't eat the manna. We <clears throat> loathed from this manna. Give us quails. And he gave them some quails to eat. And they got so sick on them eating them quails. They were, ugh. The manna was a health food for them, amen? Amen. You see, you look like you could use some health food, preacher. You're right. And I've been eating healthier lately. And I've lost 14 pounds. Amen. Right. You see, I can't tell it, but I have, and I'm going to lose more. Maybe pretty soon you'll be able to tell. I've been eating healthier food. Quit drinking coffee, drink water. They drinking on that diet soda pop. You used to drink that stuff by the case. I don't drink it no more. I drink water. And so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a message out of the Bible. Uh, they used to just ate that manna. That's all they needed. They never got sick. You talk about health food, man. They had the health food, didn't they? Their clothes didn't wear out. They never got sick. They didn't need no hospitals or anything like that. But they didn't get the rest. They wouldn't. They, unbelief, unbelief, unbelief. You're sitting here today and you have unbelief. <clears throat> and they did not have the rest of God because of their unbelief. And you do not have the rest of God today because of your unbelief. Oh my, I, there's so much here. I preached for a long time, but I'm running out of time here for this, this sermon. <clears throat> Verse 9, There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Have you ceased from your works and trusted God? I hope so. As God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Don't have unbelief. Have belief in God. Trust in God. And here's what you need to have done in your life today. Look at verse 12 and we're done. For the Word of God, that's the Bible, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. There's what we're different, you see, than the animal kingdom. And of the joints and of the marrow. The joints and of the marrow. <laughs> and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You see, the Word of God, if it gets down to the core of you, any of you that have had any friends that have had trouble with with uh, uh, cancer, with this leukemia things, they got to change the marrow in your bones because that's that's where the life is. The life is in the blood. And if you've got bad bone marrow, you're going to have bad blood. And and, and they have to, you ever heard of that? Some, some friend, you had a marrow transplant, something had to be changed. <laughs> And then eventually, God willing, it, it, it will change and it will retake over and get rid of that cancer and, 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 and get, your, get your blood. That's what God has to get down to the core of you and into your heart so that you can have rest. You need major surgery. Everybody needs major surgery to get down there and, and get you a heart transplant. That's big surgery, huh? Get rid of that old wicked hard heart and get a soft heart that's towards God. And trust in His shed blood. And trust in the power of His resurrection. Oh, let the Word of God work on you. You need rest. You see, I need rest today, Pastor, do you? Why don't you trust Christ today? If you've never done it, I hope you will. And if you had trusted Christ and you've backslidden, you're nervous too because you're walking in darkness. You're not walking in the light. You need to come back to God. Let us pray.